welcome. Um, we have two sets of minutes to consider, March 14th and April 4th. And we should probably do those separately, I'm guessing. Are we gonna announce who's here? Yeah, the guests. Maybe the 21st. Are we gonna ask the guests to introduce themselves? I'm sorry, what? Are we gonna ask the guests to introduce themselves? I will. Okay. <laughs> Mother. Okay. So I will. I, I thought that happened first. What was that, Liz? We would like to have the guests introduce themselves once again, please. Hi, I'm Stephen Dennis. Thank you. Shelly Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. How about Mr. Longnecker? Mark Harris. Mark Harris. Mark Harris. Yep. And George Hi, Mark. George is on Zoom. And the Budget Committee. And the Budget Committee. Hi, George. Hi. A little hard to tell who's up there. Okay. So we do have two sets of minutes, though. Is there a motion on the March 14th minutes? Uh, Don't everyone speak up at once. I was just clarifying which ones they were. I just read that, yeah, I will make a motion to approve the March 14th minutes. And a second, please. Um, I will, I was here, right? Yeah, I will second them. Okay. All in favor of approving the March 14th uh, select board minutes, special select board meeting minutes. Please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Bridget, hand up. Yep. Thank you. We've approved those minutes and the April 4th regular select board meeting minutes. Is there a motion? I have March 21st. Up here. Oh, I'm sorry. We should have done those together. That's all right. That's just like my March. So we'll do them one at a time. The March 21st regular select board meeting minutes. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll move that. Okay. Moved by Liz. And a second? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, all in favor of approving the March 21st minutes, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. We've approved them. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, we need to review and amend uh, the agenda for April 4th. Are there any uh, amendments to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, we will go ahead. First item on the agenda is a joint meeting with the Town Budget Committee to discuss updating the Capital Improvement Plan process document action possible. That would be me. Thanks, Peter. Yep. So, um, as everybody I think knows, the capital improvement plan has three pieces. It has the questionnaire, it has the process document, which we're discussing tonight, it has the capital asset inventory, which is that big workbook of all the assets that we know about in the town that have to be replaced, replenished at some point in the future. So, section eight of this planning process, the budget committee has expanded. And we've done that basically to make it as easy as possible for anyone coming onto the committee to maintain the capital asset inventory. So the changes to section eight are specifically related to maintaining on an annual basis the capital asset inventory. So I should share with you what our thinking was as we went through that process of updating the capital asset inventory. So remember that the inventory is but one input to the annual budget process. And so when, a, when an asset has to be replaced, uh, we either pay for it outright or we finance it. Mostly we've been financing things. So when something gets financed, it moves into the budget, into the debt service section that's applicable. Right now it's used either under fire or under public works. Once that's done, we make an update to the capital asset inventory for that asset specifically to sort of zero out 
what I would call the current iteration of its estimated financing. And then we update the next year, fiscal year, we believe the asset has to be replaced. So think of it this way, that the budget, in terms of capital expenditures and debt service, is, is, current, is, is current commitment or actual spending, while the asset inventory is estimated or future expenses. So that's the delineation we made as we moved through last year and began to move the financing of items like um, the dump truck was a was a good one. When we talked with Dorinda, you know, what's the dump truck going to cost? Okay, fine. It was a little bit, I think, underestimated in the inventory. But again, the inventory was based on, I think, a three percent interest rate. Um, so, so this is just the mechanics, Section Eight mechanics of anybody who might come in cold, might not have a lot of experience in finance or working in budgets or spreadsheets. This is a pretty granular description of the steps they go through to update the inventory. Now, we expect to make a few more changes to that inventory this year. Probably, we'd probably expand Section 8 to include adding a new asset if we have one, how to do that. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll probably ask for a volunteer on the Budget Committee to update the, the asset inventory this year other than me. I wrote the, the update to the, the document and see how we test drive it. So that again, it's the lowest common denominator somebody could come in cold and basically know what they're doing. Because if anybody spent any time in that asset inventory, it's not intuitively obvious what to do. Questions, comments, thoughts? Um, so I didn't, I didn't see a copy of the suggested changes uh, circulated to the select board. Um, so I just thought maybe we'd, I don't know if anybody's seen that, but I didn't see it come through my select it. board um, okay. email. I thought I sent it to Sarah. I've been having really bad internet problems. Oh, okay. Goodness. So okay. I, so I just, I was assuming that nobody had seen it, Mark. Um, so. I just pulled the two up side by side, yeah. and and the reality is, you know, the uh, the added or the suggested changes that we're looking for approval on um, to the process. Essentially, our understanding is as, as we want to make any kind of revisions to the process, we should take that to the select board and seek approval to kind of formalize that that uh, revision. Um, and and Mark kind of outlined it there. Um, we did have, so like these first three bullets here um, remain the same. And then essentially Mark has made um, a narrative of the process to change and make updates to the actual CIP worksheet and formalize that as part of the, the CIP process document. So just, it, I didn't, I assumed nobody had seen it, Mark, so. Well, Sarah's internet problem explains it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had no idea that was even existing. It sounds fine to me. I mean, my presumption right along is that this was going to be a little bit of a work in progress until mm -hmm. we work the kinks on the process out. Right. And I also agree that having it so that you can pass it off to someone else and have them not be completely lost and, and mm -hmm. blindsided is, uh, is worthwhile. I don't know. I, I guess I, I want a slight bit of clarity on what you said in the beginning. Um, so. Take, for example, um, the, a truck, right, that you know you're going to, like in fiscal year 24, we're going to replace this truck, right? So fiscal year 24 comes around, we replace that truck. We know we're going to have to replace it again in six years. So we put that, so, so we, where do we put that truck, the one that we just purchased? We put it in the debt service section of the public works department in the budget. Okay, yeah, and, and it's no longer in the CIP, but then we'll update the CIP with the, the new truck that's going to need to be replaced in six right. years and, in fiscal year and we will, 30. And we will estimate in, let's say, seven years okay. what it's going to cost us to do that yep. in, the, in the inventory. Gotcha. Yep, that so it's sense. an estimate. So think of it as, you know, where 
We don't have an exact understanding, inflation, interest rates, etc., right? But we just have a, a pretty good guess in the future of what that thing is going to cost. Mm -hmm. Now, where in the CIP, if, if any place, does the balance of our capital um, funds, is that in there? Like of where, you it's know, for various things? It's in the inventory. It's in, in the first tab. Okay. All right. I didn't get a chance to look at what you sent yeah, over. Dorinda, but... Dorinda gives us the updated okay. um, a tab. amounts at least okay, uh, great, twice great. a year. So. You mm -hmm. shared with us the, the select board, yes. the latest uh, document, right, that we can, like, look at, right? Yeah, there's okay. a read-only access shared mm -hmm. to the select okay. board. Got it you. was right after last meeting, I think. Okay. Can, I, can I just ask a quick question for So how does this differ from what you currently have, this new system? <clears throat> it provides a narrative okay. in addition to, we didn't make changes to the existing Section 8. Yeah. We added narrative to that process to explain that process so somebody can sit down and read that like and understand how to utilize the uh, CIP worksheet. Yeah, think of it more uh, as a job aid. Yeah, so it's like down. instructions. How You've got it. instructions on how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And does it anywhere in this CIP, does it uh, note that something from the CIP got transferred to debt service, or does it just show up on debt service? So the assumption in maybe? the update to Section 8, it specifically says, hey, we're, we're transferring this to debt service. Okay. Either buying it outright, or we're okay. transferring it to the budget under debt service. Gotcha. So I have one question. So when exactly would that happen? When we purchase the asset or when we commit to purchase the asset? So good question. It, it would actually happen when the budget is approved for that asset. Got it. That makes sense. The financing of that asset. Yep. Because okay. many times, many times when we approve the budget, we know we're purchasing a new truck, but we don't know the final pricing. We don't know whether we're going to finance it, whether we're going to pay money down, but we would make an assumption of how we're going to handle it in the budget. And then if we do it a different way, we do it a different way. Right. And generally, we get the specifics from the treasurer. Here's what we did. Yeah, but all I'm saying is, you know, when we're working on the budget in the fall of the previous year, yes. A, we may or may not know what the final cost of the asset's going right. to be, and B, we certainly may not know how we're going to pay for it. Yes. We know we're buying a truck. We put the order right. in for the truck. We have an estimated cost, but other than that, it's right. uncertain. And as, as soon as that's approved, so you still don't know what the cost is. You don't know what the interest rate is. You don't know if we're going to buy it outright. You don't know how much you're going to put down yet. But as soon as that's approved, we know now to update the asset inventory because we know we're going to buy the truck. Right. We don't know how much it's going to cost, yeah, I got it. what impact it's going to have on the budget, but no. we know that we need to update the asset inventory. Can I add, right. though, that normally we do know because it has to go to the voters for approval on town meeting. So we normally do have those prices, like um, there's exceptions for highway trucks. Well, that's um, what that I was thinking of was But if trucks, it's yeah. any other piece of asset that we're buying, it would have to go to the voters. So we would pretty much know by um, you know, March what we were going to put into the budget. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the truck situation more yeah. than anything else. So are you looking for us to approve those suggested changes? Without saying them, yes. We believe that that's the process that should take place. Sounds very official to me. Would someone like to make that motion? Um, I'll move that we approve the um, process for capital improvement plan users. And you'll second that, Victor? Yes. OK, thank you. So all in favor of approving the change to the process for the capital improvement plan, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, thanks for all your work on that. Yeah. I mean, that's been a big, uh, 
but a big thing. Well, you're thing. welcome. Glad I could help. Thank you, folks. Appreciate okay. It. Mark. Thanks, Thank you, Mark. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, guys. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Highway report, update on road issues, action possible. Gentlemen. We don't have any. Just been out grading. Uh, we've been uh, bringing stone in for stockpiling at the shop for that side of town. We have a bunch of material in the pit that we can use for that side of t this side of town. Um, just waiting on the mud. The one thing I did remember as I was coming up East Hill today admiring the grading was all that broken up pavement mm -hmm. down at the bottom there sometime yep. along. I know he'll be calling me. Yep. We don't. We'll have to take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. On thank the you. list of things to do for sure. Yeah, no, no, no. I know it's yes, on the list. Yep. Um, well, go ahead. Well, go ahead. No, I, no, I was just going to say it's pretty much what we've been doing. You're going to talk about the truck. About the freight liner? Well, I, I don't have all the information on that yet, so we'll have to wait. Okay. Uh, you have anything, Vic? Yeah. That just takes me a minute. Um, yeah, we have a couple things. Uh, we also, last year, oh, yeah. we, we didn't do it. I forgot about that. Uh, but, and we didn't put the, we didn't have anything in our budget, but we really should, uh, I'd like to hire somebody that would do it, but at least hire a sweeper to sweep all these intersections where the gravel surface roads meet the uh, blacktop and the cars, but especially motorcycles and stuff spin out, spin out. But we don't have any, we don't, we're looking into it, but we don't have any. You're talking about the paved roads. Correct. Yes, yeah, so where the paved roads, yeah. where the paved roads meet the gravel roads, like McCullough Hill, uh, uh, the, end of Cul the end of Culver. The motorcycle the community, God bless you for yeah. thinking of that. Because that end, you really know, end of Culver dangerous. Hill, uh, yeah. like Wood Road and, yep. and uh, Shady so, Road, the end of uh, Government Hill, you know, things like that where it's... We can look into it, but I didn't know maybe the board had some suggestion where we could come up with some money. You mean to, like, rent, hire someone to do uh, Hiring, uh, hiring, uh, Liz, is, is better for us because it... It free, it, if, if, we, if we rent it, we're probably not that accustomed to it, and it's just easier if they do it. How much does it cost? Don't know yet. I would say... Yeah, I couldn't imagine it would be... I would, I would say let's get some pricing. Yeah, okay. what it costs. Yep. Six or seven thousand. Oh. Oh, I don't know. I think we paid five thousand last time we did it, which was... In the 20s. Nothing on the roads is inexpensive. So I would so say. It's not something you do every year. We try to. We should. Oh. We just didn't. Last year, uh, the circumstances was uh, well, you know what they were. We didn't. We usually do it in June. We didn't have a foreman. And we and didn't. you usually hire someone? Shane hired somebody, and I don't remember who it was. Some friend of his, but. But most of the, it's, it's hard to get a, a, especially a self-contained sweeper. Uh, well, we can look into it. But if we always do it, isn't it somewhere in the budget, in like your maintenance? That was going to be my, that was, that, that was going to be my. Uh, I have not found it. It's a complete oversight. It's never been its own line item. I right. tell you no. that. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it right. came from. No, Winter maintenance, spring it maintenance. Never was it wasn't. You're right. It wasn't a line item, so we didn't pick up on it. Right. You could probably pick and choose which which Wait. it falls because it's a transition season, right? So if you had money left in one versus the other, you could pick and choose. Yeah, we can do that. I just thought, you know, I just just saying, if you guys had some ideas for me. Is the specialized services allocated? There's thirty thousand in there. Oh, we use that up. For the next season? Not for the next season, oh. but we want to do it before July. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that one's coming. Yeah, we definitely used it. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, we'll look into it. Well, yeah. we don't we have to do it this week. We, no, we have no hidden pot of money, so you guys already control all the money. For most of it, 80% of it. Okay. We'll figure it out. But, we'll I, figure but out. I think it is I think it is a good thing to do. I think yeah. it's a safety thing and not just for oh, motorcycles. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. 
Do I just we start will, with that? We will get information together. Sarah said Paul has his hand up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, sorry. Oh, Paul's going to tell oh, us. Oh, I couldn't see it. Hey, guys. Um, quick question. I, I'm just on my way home and had, I had a question regarding the paving down on Center Road. I didn't know if you guys had noticed the kind of the severe cracking we're already getting down here. Um, if that's a that's worth a call to the paving company that did it. it. It seems like the section that got pulled up has held up fine, but everything that was bow mag seems to be breaking up what I call pretty badly for not even being there or right around six months. I didn't know if you guys had been monitoring that and maybe talk to them about that or maybe could. It just seems like a lot of money spent for pavement that's already starting to crack pretty, what I would call pretty severely for being fresh. It's definitely something we mentioned here. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just just looking out for all of us at this point with it. So the other the other question I have about that, and I had that on my uh, on my hit list also, is should we be resealing those cracks so moisture doesn't get in through there? Yeah, you get you get Nikon to come out and spray uh, spray them. Yeah, with rubber can do that yeah. with rubber. Because otherwise, it's just going to cause the pavement to start to break up, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean it, it. It's not like I mean you'd. Have, uh, well, I guess I won't say it that way. You have to be pretty not aware that it is, it breaks up and it's it's bumpy. But, you know, uh, I think, I, I don't know, some, some people might add some over in expectations, but that road hadn't been treated for years and years and years and years. And, you know, what you're seeing there is way below anything we did or anything that you would would do uh, bow magging. Oh, I, 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 so get, I, don't that. Think, you know, I get that 100%. I'm not trying I mean, to make excuses. I'm just... No, no, no. That's the reality. Well, for it. instance, the, you know, coming up, uh, coming up towards the school, that pavement is starting to yeah. break yeah. up pretty good, too. Right. But anything we can do to, whether it's, whether it's crack filling or patching or whatever we can do to preserve that payment is important You're because once, right. it, once it breaks through, then we've got hell to pay. You're absolutely right. Yes, Sarah. What is bow magging? Uh, is, that, is that a phrase? Is that a process? Is, what is, what's the English word for that? That is the English word. It's for uh, reclaiming, uh, reclaiming the uh, asphalt. Okay, so it's like word. using a rototiller to yeah. dig down about a foot. B-O-M-A-G-G-I-N-G. Yeah. B-O-M-A-G, -G, I think, right? Or G-G-I-N-G. -G. B-O-M-A-G, sorry. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, next. Yep. You saw, did you get the pictures from Sam? I did. We went over there this morning. Yep. Uh, can you, we talked with Sam and we said that you would probably talk about uh, getting that you got a hold of or we're going to get a hold of our, our lawyer and what you which I do. did he was he was out of town until just the other day but I got to speak to him today and he said he needs to review our uh, road ordinance highway ordinance Sarah is that on our website it's on our website he has, he has copies okay I'll let him know well he wasn't sure he had the he had the latest he wants to review it but it's it's one of two one of two ways of enforcing it. And he's going to look into it. His suggestion was he thought that it probably a good idea for him to write a nasty gram and just lay it out. And then if there's no positive response from that, uh, consider taking further action. Uh, Eric, Eric's got an idea, and as long as everybody's here, and it, except for Zach, we were thinking of maybe taking some gravel. Uh, a few loads of gravel and go down there with a grader and put it down on that section of road, define the road, and then just tell everybody, don't do anything to it. This is what you got. Stay well, uh, so I took it upon myself to say to the town attorney, I don't think there's a huge cost involved in fixing the road. I don't, I don't think that's a big concern for the town. Eric We're not figured interested we'd do in it. Eric figured we could do it. It, it, for sure, in a half a day, you know, right. before dinner right. and uh, lunch. But 
But what, what I'm concerned about, and I'm sure these folks are concerned about, is if he continues to ignore and continues to change and continues to modify and continues to not pay attention to our road ordinance, what have we accomplished? We're just back in the same right mess again. So, I mean, my suggestion would be that we have him write the letter and say, we are going to, whatever the description of the work we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to add some gravel, we're going to define the parameters of the road, and then you are not to change, alter, or disturb that road in any way, manner, shape, or form without prior permission from uh, the road commissioner or the road foreman or both. Would the board entertain having uh, Mr. French come in here and talking to him? Sure. Inviting him? Sure. We've done that once, haven't we? <clears throat> I, I think so, didn't we? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we, I think back in September or something, he came to one of the meetings, he spoke a little bit. I think at that point there was a, a verbal direction from the board to Mr. French to basically cease and desist. Right. So. Which didn't work. Maybe you didn't understand it. We can try it one more time. I would say, I mean, I, well, I, I mean, I don't disagree, but I, but I think, I think spending a few dollars, and it would be a few dollars, to have the attorney write the letter is a little more forceful than us sending him a letter or visiting him or talking with him or whatever. Okay. And, you know, lay out that the expectation is that he doesn't park his equipment or vehicles in the town right away, you know. Mm -hmm. Spell out exactly what our what our concerns have been and warn him that we will be taking additional action if he fails to uh, conform. No, I I was just I'm not negating anything that Sam and her family are saying, but I, I just and, and I don't know if it would work, but I I just well, think I think the idea of 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 correcting where the water is running the wrong way or where the water got redirected and defining the boundaries of the road so it's clear, you know, it isn't, it isn't this vague transition where it got, I looked at the photos today and that's exactly the way I remember that road being. You know, where's the lawn and where's the, where's the road? Yes. It's not just a town policy. It literally says in the state legislation that you cannot alter the flow of a roadway without a permit. That no, no, no. We, we, we know. I'm just, yeah. Well, I get that, but I'm just. But, it, but it's, to be but it's our, it's, it's our, our ordinance first. Violating. It's a state legislation. Right. Is violating. But he explained to me that it's in terms of enforcing it. It's our ordinance first, and our ordinance is backed up by the state statutes. Correct. So the bottom line is to engage in a process. In a certain sense, give him give him one more chance to clean up his act, but reconstruct the road, define. I like the idea of defining the boundaries of the road. I mean, now I noticed this morning there's a row of sticks there. Are those are those his sticks? Yes. And he thinks that's where the edge of the road is, or where the edge of the right of way is. Who knows what it is? We don't know what those mark. I mean, they're not. They might be a little bit in the road. A couple of them, I think you said a couple of them, but most of them are off the edge of the road. But. Uh, when I say road, I mean a driven part. I don't mean the right of way. Right, right. And and I just think that, uh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know I just think it's it's worth a chance to uh, to talk to the guy and 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 maybe you know one more time try to mitigate it. I know you guys have got your mind that you can't do anything, but. Well, we can do things. Yeah. We I'm can just do saying things, forceful, but they're unpleasant, forceful. expensive things. Expensive for the town. Right. Potentially expensive for him if he right. loses in court, if it's court or if it's tickets or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it's. As I said, I believe at the last meeting, we've never had to take these steps before. So this is uncharted territory for us a little bit. But he reaffirmed basically what I sort of had in the back of my mind is what the process was, and it's a question of whether we go through the municipal ticket process or go through a court process. If it's a municipal ticket process, which I think it is potentially, then there's really no cost for us. We just have to go through the process. 
if it's go to court, then we obviously have to pay the Don't attorney. Rather not do that. Go to Amen. court. Yeah. Nobody wins in court. Right. But what I would suggest, Victor, is maybe maybe you and Eric and I can get together and come up with a list of things that should be included in that letter. Okay. And give it to him. Does that make sense? Rather than of him dream it up. Sure. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Does that sound right to everyone else on the board? Yeah, whenever you got time. In terms of a process, mm -hmm. I'm available. I'm going to be a little more available as of next Wednesday. That's All the right. good news. Um, well, Eric won't. Yeah. The ninth, right? So we got to get it done before the ninth, next five days. <laughs> uh, well, seriously, if it has to be done in the next five days, if you guys would put your head together and then I can get together with you, Victor. It's just right now I'm leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to Hanover every morning, so. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a, just a quick question along with this before we change the subject. Is I know that the town ordinance says that you can snow plow, because I did it all last year so everybody could get off the road. Should I be reaching out to you guys before I do that next year? That hopefully I don't have to do any more this year. Right now I use our tractor and just plow the whole road so that everybody can get off. All right. Is that still all right to do that? It is according to our policy, but I want to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong. Uh, I mean, we plowed class four roads for a long, long time. That's right. So I, I personally don't, I don't see it. If the board tells me that's what they want to do, or and Eric, we'll do it. We'll we'll make them, you know, no, get so it. Well, right now I'm doing it. I just want okay. to make sure that I don't have any problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't think obstructing your access to a residence by not allowing you to plow the road is. Oh, no. well, that's, what I to make that's sure never been our that our practice. Our practice has always been that you can plow the road to your property, and if you're also plowing the access to your neighbor's property. That's Upper fine. Barnett is a fine example from the uh, turnaround out to the, uh, well, actually out to the, to the last house. That's class four and been plowing it for years. Yeah. yeah. I think just the depositing of the snow would be the only thing that would come to my, to my mind, as you're traveling through the, the road section and making sure you're not depositing snow on. Right now I parked all the snow against where the bridge used to be, so nobody could go over the bridge. So it was like seven feet high. Yeah. You do that yourself? Yeah, with the tractor. Good job. Yeah. Not bad. Right. So how would he get in there if you weren't plowing the road? Well, he's got a wheel of tobacco. I don't know if it runs, but... Uh, he wind it once last year, I yeah. think, or no, the year before. But nobody would get off if, if we had the two or three feet. And, we plow. Yeah. and then his brother's got, got, the, got a pickup of the plow. It's just yeah. up on the head. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's plan on getting together next week, Vic. I'll give you a call, and we'll get it to him. And um, yeah, okay. The only other thing are we going to talk about uh, policy here, or uh, do you want to do that at a later point in time? Policy with regard to what? Uh, like, uh, I mean, there were some questions about signing. Uh, Eric's payroll or and stuff like that. Eric called me up and Monday morning and thought he had to get me to do it to uh, sign his payroll. It was mentioned last week. No, yeah, I remember. And I remember. Then of course, we got the. I believe. Uh, I believe what we said was we were going to review all of that at some yeah, time in the future as one of our goals. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for the time being, for the time being, I guess. That's why I'm fine with that. I'm fine. Just would you know? I I just told Eric I wasn't comfortable signing an affidavit that was uh, was affirming something I didn't know anything about. You know what I mean? I don't know how. Well, about let's not get here's, here's the no. I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time on right. it. But I mean, here's the question. You know, it just isn't a good practice for someone to be signing their own okay. timesheet, right? I mean, that's just. I don't know. We theoretically, every time we sign these orders and we sign it, we approve it. Well, in technically, I mean, I don't want to. We're approving it. But we're approving it based on the fact that Eric has reviewed it, and presumably you've reviewed it. Right. Okay. I. Yeah. All right. We'll wait for the big meeting. 
And at the same time, or not, huh? Nothing. Or not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I hear you. Um, the other thing is the uh, that uh, the declaration was made here in the minutes last time that people can't use their time to go over 40 hours. Did we? Did we? Did we vote on that? To Did clarify, we say that? It's a clarification of existing policy. Who clarified right. it? Well, I mean, that's... We discussed it. I mean, it's not... I mean, I, that, that, that has been, I believe, our practice and our policy, right, Dorinda? But, you know, so that was just restating what we thought we were already doing. Okay, let's put a clarification. We say you can't use time to go over 40 hours. You're talking about vacation time, sick time, time off. Is that what you're saying? Paid, paid yeah. time off, yes. Paid time off. PTO. Yeah. yeah. You want to talk about that later, too? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anything else, gentlemen? Okay. Thank you. Joint meeting with the Town Planning Commission. Discussion includes info on local cannabis measures. Action possible. Sandy, welcome. Thank you. been doing with the Planning Commission and to perhaps clarify a bit of the letter that the Planning Commission sent. I'll start with that. That relates to cannabis measures, local measures that the town can take regarding cannabis. And it came up to the Planning Commission. It was brought to our attention by Ann Gilbert, who works, I think, with Central Vermont New Directions when we were doing, when we were updating our zoning. And she flagged for us, you're updating your zoning. Can't, you know, retail cannabis is coming, why don't you look at this? We looked at it and sort of we viewed how it fit with our zoning and said, okay, that's all good. And then she also said there's, the towns are also able to create a cannabis control commission, which can issue licenses. My understanding is similar to liquor licenses for any retail cannabis operations in town. Um, that's something only the select board can do. So we looked into it. We, did, we don't have a recommendation one way or the other, and the letter that we wrote was mostly to just flag for you this is something the town can do. Sure. Um, the, the state has come up with a fairly detailed guidance on what you can and cannot do. Um, you can't put additional, my understanding is you can't put additional requirements on those operations, but you can make sure that they are following whatever existing zoning is in, is in the course of a, um, a license. So this is the Planning Commission handing this off to you and just sharing that we looked into this a little bit, we reviewed it, we didn't think there was anything for us to do, but. So here's my only question and comment is, as long as I can remember, the select board has been the Town of Middlesex Liquor Control Commission. We issue the licenses, we review complaints, we do it. So I'm a little reluctant to say, okay, we've been doing that, now we're gonna have cannabis and we're gonna create a separate organization or potentially create a separate organization. It's not, it doesn't have to be a separate organization. The select board can be the cannabis control or commission, commission the same as it's the, it does the liquor. So it would just be, you would be treating, my understanding is you would be I would, treating. I would, I would presume we already are. Yeah. Well, you are for liquor, but you are not for cannabis. You have to actually. We have to actually take a step to do it. Do well, probably we do need to do that. You do need to say that, yes, we're going to do that, and yes, we would appoint the select board to do that, not create some separate commission. Again, that's up to you. If you want to create a separate commission, you can do okay. that. Well, I, mis I misunderstood the intent yeah. of your letter. I apologize. Yeah. Do you, Sandy, offhand remember what we voted for? What we voted for a few years back, like re there were two things that we voted yes on. We voted cannabis. to allow. We voted to allow retail, and we voted to allow growing. I believe. Yeah, some sort Those of manufacturing or yeah, something like that. Yeah, there was a like process, yeah. a, a process of a, a group of different licenses yeah. that could be had, and then there was retail amongst that. Okay, so, so what this is saying is that. They still have to do all that, and this would be sort of a one further step that they would have to take. Who's they? Who's like they anyone who wants to 
sell cannabis. If somebody wants to sell cannabis and moves into, you know, yeah. the store next door right now or wherever, right now, my understanding is they need to get permission from the state right. to do yes. that. Yes. Not at the state house. Okay. Right. But there's nothing the town would do about it. That's what I'm saying. And now, so there's this, nothing the town would do about yes. it. Yes. Right. If you adopted a cannabis control commission, you would issue a license similar to what you do for okay. liquor licenses. And there's so they'd have to go to the state, and then they'd also also have to come to us so that we would be aware that this is happening. Yeah. I, I think that's not a bad idea. But the key word, the key word. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can go first. The key word is what you said. Is you, we can't say. Anyone can't say. Uh, they can't say anything about the rules already in place by the state. They can't change any right. of that, so what's the point? Well, our point is just to flag this for you, and we recommend that you well, take it up and make that. a Thank decision you. as to whether you want to do this or not. Right. And, and frankly, the Planning Commission didn't have a specific recommendation no. one way or another. But well, what no, what makes sense to me, and I did, I, I apologize, because yeah. I, I misunderstood what you were, what you were uh, suggesting, but if we do it for liquor, why wouldn't we do it for cannabis? The same thing, the same process. I guess the only thing. I, you know, I mean, we have the right. We have. My understanding is, if we don't issue a liquor license, they can't sell liquor, whether they have a state license or not. Right. So okay. assuming, assuming it would be the same for cannabis, assuming it gives us it now. gives us some element of control over what's going on and the ability to respond directly. I mean, the state's not exactly well known for enforcing their rules and regulations either. Gives us some direct control if there's an issue or a problem. And the good thing, if we get one here, we'll have more tax revenue. No. no. We don't get any of the tax revenue. Not from, not from the stuff, no. Not unless you but authorize some sort of local. The local tax. Oh, the building. Well, probably, yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Yes. You could actually just do what Burlington does, and most people don't know this, but if you have Verizon and you're a Burlington resident, you can look on your bill, and they get three cents on every transaction, just because you're a resident of Burlington. Burlington does. How does this relate? Because they've set up as a local option tax. It's a local. Because they, yeah. Burlington City, put in a special tax. Yeah. That's a local resident. option. Right. Yeah. So if you're a resident, you have a credit card that you for say an Amazon purchase, they're getting money from that purchase. Yeah. But how does that relate to the marijuana license? You could just pass a special tax for anybody oh. to purchase something. Well, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have never, problem. never done that. But who knows? Where you can. But I, I just think, fundamentally, to me, as a matter of equity and fairness and everything else. They should be traded in a similar manner to anybody who wants to sell out. So you need a motion? No, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Has a question. I have two yeah. questions. First of all, if somebody was to sell it at retail, wouldn't they have to meet the zoning regulations for the operation? Of, right. Okay. And the second thing is, is I thought we were notified by a, the state if somebody is um, applying for a license or gets a license in our town. Isn't that correct? I think it's correct. We just haven't had that experience. And you can't fill Well, we've now. gotten a couple of them, right? We were aware of a couple people that had licenses. Are, are we made aware by the people bringing it to the town, though, or the... I the thought we were notified by the, the state. It's not like, for example, on your agenda tonight, you've got two liquor licenses you've got to approve. Where, that has not happened. But how were we aware that there was... Um, didn't weren't we notified there was a couple of uh, marijuana the only operations? Way we is because people applied for zoning permits because they wanted to change the use of their property. To okay. Include then that. that's how we found out. Right. And I also think it kind of falls under agriculture, although it might be a little different. But that's the only way we found. There's no formal notification process. Okay. So how do we find out now if somebody's got a state liquor license? Does the state notify us or yes, people? Yes. The, the way it's all the, the old way used to be that you know this was all done by paper. But as of January 1st, we now have it in a system, and I that's the state sends the lit license applications to us. And there are separate fees that they pay, that the liquor establishments pay to the town and to the state. The board votes on it and says, well, should we give, you know, do you sign off on the, the classes? And then I now go in and say, yes, it's been approved, but they need to pay. They need to pay this. 
So then that generates the license for the businesses. But if you guys said, no, we don't approve that, that's where it stops. These establishments would not be able to have their licenses renewed or to have licenses to begin with. Right. And but is everything that, is handled and, from and the, is that department the state, control. what the state is planning for cannabis as well? Do we know? I don't know. I mean, no. we just don't have any cannabis operations in town right now that are, you know, not legit, you know, so. Well, and it doesn't sound mm -hmm. like it. Yeah, I mean, as uh, I read through the guidance, I think it's being treated differently than liquor, so it's not identical, but there are some similarities, and I guess my, my suggestion would be that the select board take this up and have, you know, add it to your agenda sometime. Do we want to have yeah, a right. cannabis control yeah. commission? And maybe one or two of you look through what those the guidance and the regulations are and report back on report back on that. Yeah. Would yeah. that fall into um, home occupation? <laughs> 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 I mean, it always has. Well, that's, uh, no, I'm just, I mean, besides somebody opening a storefront or something, that's something different. But if, I mean, if people are selling it. I don't know. You don't know. Well, I think we're it would be gonna, worth We're inviting. not going to be involved in that, I don't think. Uh, I think it would be worth inviting Ann Gilbert to come give an example of maybe some, what some towns, if they have actually already adopted. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some document or something. Um, who, are, who are we inviting? Ann Gilbert, well, who has has been working with towns um, as a resource to create these local cannabis commissions, just to hear from her and to see what it entails. I mean, if it's just a you know some sort of piece of paper with words on it that we adopt, and then we know that people are going to always be required to just come to us, then we have a sense of. I mean, I think it makes sense to have a sense who in your town is doing what, right? Well, and it also Control makes substances. makes sense that if you know if all of a sudden all of a sudden one of our liquor licensees was creating a problem or having an issue, we have the right to revoke their license, and then they're out of business. So that gives us leverage. Right. Not that I'd like to use it, but it gives us leverage, right? So let's invite her. Okay. That makes sense to everyone. And he has a, another question. Oh, yeah. I was just going to let the select board know that there is now currently a uh, coalition of retail cannabis sales, and they would probably be a fairly good resource as far as finding yeah. all the current legislation. Um, and they are going to start lobbying to change a lot of that legislation, so they'll have a lot of proposals um, on their website as well. Oh, I'm sure this yeah. is going to be a moving. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a moving target, So, but it, it'd probably be a pretty good source of information yeah. for you guys. Yeah. I do think that the guidance that the state provided was very helpful in telling, explaining what towns can and can't do and, okay. and what the parameters are of that. So. Okay. Um, and, you, and you gave it that in this. Yes, I gave, you, I gave you a link yeah, to that. Link yeah. Yeah. Here. Yes. Can you yeah. have something? I was just going to say there is some info about which towns have approved it on the state website. It's um, called the Cannabis Control Board, state of Vermont. And... Um, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So about thirty towns have designated commissions. Yeah. And then it says applicants seeking a license in these towns will need local licensure before they may begin operating. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly what I'd like to see us do. It Whatever. says that it. It says, please let the CCB know by sending a copy of the resolution. Um, okay, so if, if, the, if the select board chooses to um, create a resolution, they're asking for us to notify them. Yep. Yeah, they want to know. Do they have an example of a resolution? I think there's one in, the, there's one in, in this link. In, in the link, I think. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Bridget. Thank, Thank you. Um, you want to give us a little update yeah, on? A little update on others. The zoning passed. That's all done. We're not taking. We're not dealing with zoning right now. Um, the planning commission. Uh, uh, we're still looking at a uh, possibility of figuring out how to get funding to put sidewalks or, or slow traffic down into the village. Um, it was really disappointing that B Trans came in and paved all of Route Two without doing any of this putting sidewalks or bike lanes in, but that's what they did. Um, 
I've talked to that we will have somebody from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission come and talk to us about maybe we can phase this in. Maybe there's additional funding that's available to do it. I, I don't know if or when it's going to happen, but we're still trying to figure out if we can make that happen sometime. Um, there's also the possibility of doing a, um, a demonstration project with sort of temporary barricades or temporary crosswalks. We're going to look into see if we can do that this summer, again, in front of Camp Me, just through this section of, of the village. Um, and Russ and I were interviewed for a podcast that the state of Vermont is doing to sort of highlight their Better Places grant, which was the grant that paid for um, the trails and the um, overlooks from the Camp Meade property down to the river. Um, we did that, I don't know when that's gonna be, be out, but we did that uh, last right. week, a little bit of you know, promotion for Middlesex. And, and uh, work going forward that the Planning Commission is taking up for, from now until like June or so, we're, we're taking a closer look at conservation, natural resources, and wildlife planning. There's new um, information out, new mapping resources. We're working with the Regional Planning Commission to create a, a Middlesex designated resource map that um, we can later on add to our town plan maps. Um, and we wanted, we're hoping to have some time to get together with Middlesex residents to add to it what are, what are places that are of particular importance to the people in Middlesex, Where do you, what do you know about what's missing from this map, what's maybe wrong in these maps. Um, we're, uh, we are planning to send a survey out about um, natural resources and conservation um, planning issues in April, between April and May. And um, then in May, at our May meeting, ha have a bigger get together and, and invite people to come and help us figure out these mapping resources so that we'll have these uh, both for the next time we update our town plan and also to help guide the work of the Conservation Commission um, and the Trails Committee as well. We're working with the Conservation Commission on that. And the next thing, which ties into I think something that Russ is talking with you about as well, is um, we sort of, we, we flagged as a, a longer term project to work on, to, to take a closer look at opportunities for water and um, septic issues in the village. That that's, that's long been sort of a, um, an issue that, is a, that limits growth in the village and uh, ha, you know, are, are there things that, that we can do as a planning commission to, we were going to invite some folks in from the Agency of Natural Resources to see what, um, what we could do about that. We haven't started that work. We sort of, we kicked that can down the road and said let's get this done first and we'll take that up um, later in the, in the summer. That's, those are, those are our plans. Okay, thank you. Any questions, anybody? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Russ, presentation by Russ Bennett and Otter Creek Engineering, RE Water, found on property purchased by Robert Napier Revocable Trust from James W. Colby Revocable Trust as a potential source of village water. Action unlikely. Gentlemen, welcome. Kind of moves so that they, people they can they can see you on Zoom. Is that oh, nice? and also I need you. Go ahead and look that way. You know, you don't see you on a, the owl will see you and. No, no, I'm just. That. Okay. Yeah. 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 We started looking around for natural resources, et cetera, on uh, Napier property, which is the Galaxy of Yes LLC is sort of managing that and will absorb that property. Um, we have drilled a couple of wells up there, um, and they yield. We have to do uh, replenishment testing and uh, well shield and see what the impact is on the nearest 
wells, and uh, we've started the process of um, going for a permit to test within 2,000 foot radius of the wells that we have on the property to see what uh, impact there may or may not be on those wells. So it's likely that there's not very much if there is, because that's a pretty long distance, and are, the wells are way in the middle of the property. Um, so uh, likely there, but we're going to do all of that kind of work. But part of uh, what started us down this road is we think our first phase of what we want to do up there um, is in the sort of commercially mixed use zone area, Sandy. Um, and the first thing that we want to do is uh, apply for and, and build a building that can hold a daycare of 150 kids um, and then have some other spaces in it as well. And then uh, a barn-like structure, which will all come before the, uh, the DRB and, um, and all of you guys. A uh, barn-like structure that can be, have some maker space in it. Um, sort of an extension of what we're doing um, down at Camp Me, just sort of uh, expounding on it. And then um, on a field we call the Lumpy Field, um, which is sort of on the left side of the Colby Road when you go down the road, um, build three or four multifamily structures that would be, would have some unaffordable housing in it and some um, uh, long-term subsidized affordable housing as well so that we have mixed development there. That's, that's the extent of our thinking there. There's a lot of other land <clears throat> and we don't really know um, what our access will be out to that and, but we, we see that becoming some form of um, save, preserve land, some housing, etc. So we went looking for water and we knew that you guys had hired Stone Environmental around 2000, 2001, and they had looked at that property and others for sources of water, for municipal water for, for here. Um, we used some of that information <clears throat> to drill the wells that we drilled. So we have two wells that are dr uh, drill, well drillers yield of 50 gallons a minute. So it's theoretically 100 gallons a minute. Um, and we know roughly what our uh, capacity is for septic disposal in the field that would be for that um, with untreated. And 50 gallons a minute on a 12-hour day, which is how they figure it, um, would about equal <clears throat> that capacity. In, the, in thinking about that, we thought also about, we, we know a lot about the village because we're in the village and we know how really strong the need for a municipal system is down here in order to, it's mostly sort of 19th century technology that's going on for water and sewage disposal in the village. And that inhibits its ability to even maintain itself. There's a lot of deferred maintenance as, as we know here. Um, so. It's uh, uh, wanting to always be a good, you know, citizen of uh, doing stuff in Middlesex. We thought, well, if we have this much water and we're upgrading, um, and that's what we talk with Craig and Eric about. They're knowledgeable about all things water. They're engineers that do this. Um, if, we were up, if we had storage upgrading from where the wells are, there would be enough head pressure to have really good hydrants everywhere throughout the village, as well as uh, potable water. Um, for us, we could be selfish and say, well, okay, we're just gonna, we got water and we've got sewage and we could do some stuff and we're gonna go ahead and see what we can get permitted to do. Um, but it, I don't think that's the right thing to do, uh, personally. Um, that would, because <clears throat> if we did what was only good for us, enough uh, hydrant power and all that jazz, it would limit it being able to become a municipal system because we wouldn't put in big enough pipes to serve, you know, if we were being pecuniary. We put in an eight inch pipe, 
and what would need to be served all down through here would be 12 inch piping. So it makes sense to pose the question, is there interest in the town um, to have a municipal system and how can we um, help? Um, I'm not looking, I'm not looking to gain anything. I want to make that perfectly clear as far as we know what it's, we have some ideas what it would cost for us to do our own thing. And we have some rough ideas, but we've got to get and do the real work to see what it would cost to do, say from Route 100B to um, the other side of the commercial district. Um, which would enable you to have a lot of your people get off the systems that they have and would actually make it possible for you to have denser growth if you wanted it and have housing growth. Um, one of the things that I see is uh, you don't have enough water, you can't really build systems that need to have sprinkler, buildings that need to have sprinklers unless you've got a pant load of money. <laughs> Um, so having uh, a water supply that could, pr that could provide that would enable more jobs, et cetera, to be able to come here. Um, so my thought is we should let these guys talk a little bit about what's there, and I will sort of plant the seed of saying, I don't know how much federal money there is, but there's a lot of money for these kinds of things right now and state money. Um, for uh, sewer and water. And it would be uh, a pity to miss this opportunity if it's an opportunity that you want to do. We, the Galaxy <clears throat> folks, would be dependent, we can talk about how it would work, um, could be a helper in some way because we've already bought the land, we've drilled wells, we know a bunch of things. Um, not looking to sell water, um, we could probably help with some amount of match, uh, you know, depending on what that might be, because there's always going to be something that the residents, the, the government, the other government, um, wants to see demonstrated. So um, with that, I think I'll let Craig and Eric sort of talk, you can ask me any questions as you want, um, to talk about water and how they see it and other towns that they've worked on and how that's worked for them. Well, thanks, thanks for the time. Uh, my name is Craig Jewett, work for Otter Creek Engineering. Uh, Eric DePhillips uh, also works with us. Um, so Russ came to me about three, four months ago talking about his project and wanted to understand from his project perspective, you know, what do I need to do for the water system? I know I need a water system. I'm going to have X amount of people up here. I know it's a community-based water system. What do I need to do for my project first and foremost? Um, and then as a secondary sort of look to that saying, okay, I know I need to establish 80, 100 year assets. If I'm going to go do that, I don't want to do it in a vacuum. I want to make sure that it is available for future expansion or possibly uh, development of a municipal system. Um, what, do, what do those things look like? Um, so we did a, a preliminary kind of overview of what the project requirements are and then what the opportunities were related to, um, to a municipal system. Um, <clears throat> So as far as some of the major assets, wells, water storage tank, the, the big ticket items, the 100-year assets, um, Russ needs to do that for his project regardless. So there is a, an opportunity for the municipality to potentially leverage what he's already planning on doing to meet your guys' needs um, long term in the future. Now, that's directly proportionate to how big a service area you guys are, are interested in serving, whether you're interested in that at all. Um, I think one of the other things is also, is there an established need? I know you guys, as a municipality, had Stone go look 15, 20 years ago at water. I'm assuming that was generated based off of a general kind of want and a need uh, and an idea from the town's perspective that this is something that's necessary there. So one of the things that we looked at was just 
kind of assuming the galaxy of yes happens, what opportunities does that open up to to the town as a whole? Where where could be served? Where couldn't be served? Where's reasonable? What's not reasonable? Um, on the handout I gave you, there's actually two sheets. The first sheet is kind of the galaxy of yes. And then the second sheet is kind of a very broad brush, back of the napkin. Here's what a service area down in the Middlesex Village and beyond, what that could look like. Um, and so the blue line that you see there is essentially the distribution piping. And then the red are all the fire hydrants related to that. So. There's no real science to this. It was, where do you have properties? Obviously, the village center is, is a big portion of that. What would something like that look like? Um, and so we, we looked at it and, and laid it out and said, yeah, it's, it's absolutely possible. Your, where your water storage tank needs to be and where your wells are for your project is advantageous for the town. Um, it creates more than enough pressure to serve the village um, and so long as you can get the water to those users, um, you have a, a viable system here. Um, you'd have to drill down at some point in time and figure out how many of these people would actually want to connect, which is the other part of the calculus related to that, and then determine whether that capital cost meets with kind of what your user rates are going to be eventually. Um, the other component to this, and it's a little abstract when some people hear it and they kind of turn their head a little bit. A water system like this is also a village wastewater solution. And everyone looks at you and goes, wait a second, we were just talking about water. How are we getting to wastewater now? What the water system allows is more opportunity to find village wastewater solutions. Because now you're not worried about everybody's individual well and their proximity related to a community-based wastewater system. So it helps open up more opportunities. It doesn't solve your problem, it doesn't create a solution for you, but it potentially opens up other opportunities that without the water system aren't opportunities for you guys to review. So in looking through this and kind of going over this, um, we talked to Russ and, and said, you know, from a sheer initial major assets that need to be developed, that sort of thing, the delta between what Galaxy of Yes would need to do and what the town may potentially want to utilize this for, there isn't a big order of magnitude difference. The, the cost difference is getting the water from up on the hill down to the village. And that's all based on how many users that you've got. So there's, a, there's an economy and scale in there. There's an affordability. At some point in time, it becomes unaffordable. There's so many users that you need to get on. That's all kind of down the road sort of stuff. We can't push on a rope necessarily from that standpoint. So in, in talking with Russ, that's where we felt this was the right opportunity to come to the town and say, is there interest here? If there's not interest here, or if, if there isn't uh, appetite for that, then Russ kind of has his answers and can feel good that he didn't preclude an option available to the town. And if the town decides not to want to go down this road or look at it further, then, then that's fine. His conscience is clear that you know he, he gave everybody the opportunity to consider it um, and didn't make a decision without coming to you guys and saying, I'm just going to go do this. And if you guys can take advantage of it, great. And if you can't, you know, no big deal. Um, because we've seen in a lot of circumstances where this, um, this does open up a lot of opportunity. I know there was a conversation earlier about growth. This absolutely impacts your growth. Um, and you don't need to go very far down the road to find a perfect example of it. If anybody knows anybody in the town of Berlin and what they've been doing since their water system has gotten up and running and they got off Montpelier's water system, they will probably tell you they wish they had done that years before they actually did it. Um, their water's cheaper than what they were paying Montpelier for it. They have had to go out and we need to find more wells for them because they have more demand than the water that we have right now. So they have the opposite problem now. They've got to go and find more water to figure out how to serve the demand that's gone above and beyond what they originally thought there was. So uh, from my perspective, this is a good opportunity for from the town's perspective to to take advantage of the opportunity and look at this further without having to have any real skin in the game necessarily right now. 
Um, Russ and I were talking about kind of next steps and, and what would happen in these sorts of scenarios. And really, um, one of the things is um, they call it kind of call it a needs assessment, but it's a half needs assessment, half income assessment because the mean household income, which is how all the federal financing is based off from, you guys are not in a, in a, a unique situation where the village, the village income does not necessarily represent the town's income as a whole from a mean household income standpoint. Villages tend to have lower incomes. You get further out. You get around the sprawl. That's where the incomes start to go up, and that's artificially inflated. So, for instance, right now, if you were looking at Middlesex as a whole, you guys would not qualify for any subsidy related to federal funding. You would get low interest loans, but you wouldn't get any sort of subsidy related to that. How we addressed that in Berlin was we went and we did an income survey of the actual service area and went to the individuals and said, what, what are your actual numbers so that we can go to USDA or to the state's uh, f funding program and say, here's the actual mean household income for the service area, not Middlesex as a whole, the service area. And that allows for further conversation about whether something could be subsidized related to that with all the federal funding. Um, I think the other thing that comes out of all of this as well is you don't see a lot of private water companies anymore. And Russ had, Russ had said he doesn't have any interest in selling you water. Um, I think that's A, because he's not interested in doing that as a business. But in general, the state makes it literally impossible for that to be a viable business. Um, you can count on one or two hands how many private water systems still exist in the state of Vermont. They've all gone away. Um, Arlington took theirs over. Uh, Woodstock is one of the few towns that still has a private water company that serves all the village and all the town, all, all the water there. And they're actually um, regulated by the Public Service Board. So those individual water systems are treated like Green Mountain Power. You have to justify your rates. You can't have a sinking fund or generate any real revenue because you're not supposed to be making money off of this necessarily. What that does, though, is it restricts the control of the water system and how you plan for projects, how you raise rates ahead of projects that you're going to do. Public Service Board doesn't allow you to do that. You have to demonstrate this is what you need to raise your revenues for. They allow you to do that, and then you go and do a project as opposed to a normal water system would say, hey, we're going to do something five years from now. We're going to start raising rates now so that we're not trying to hit everybody at the end of the game. And it allows more flexibility and control for the towns to do what they want with their infrastructure, as opposed to having someone like 248 come in and say, this is the rate that you need to set related to that. Um, when you talk about the federal funding that wouldn't necessarily qualify, are you including the Build Back Better grant? Because they define rural communities that qualify as any population under 10,000, and the drinking water and clean water state revolving funds is something that I mean, maybe I'm missing something, mm -hmm. but I believe that we would definitely qualify for that. So, and that puts out, that will potentially give the town up to a million dollars to put toward a system like that. Yes, so there, there are funding buckets that are new related to ARPA and to the infrastructure bill that have that's, created. That's just an, uh, an EPA. Correct. Right? Specifically out of the Build Better grant funding. Yep. And so you would qualify for federal funding through the state or uh, USDA rural that development. That we could apply for that, not through the state, just literally with yep. our entity validation number. We can apply for that at the federal level, not going through the state. Right. And, and that would be on top of what, so that would be the, okay, if the state's saying we're going to give you a low interest loan, this is another bucket for you to pull from and say, okay, well, we're going to use this fund to pay for our portion of what you're saying is I going to be a loan. I just wanted to clarify that yep. if you knew something different than I did. No, I'm no, no, you're, you're, that you're that grant. Yep. No, and, and, and you're right on the money with that and how that gets leveraged with some of the other funding um, from either program is part of the game that gets played to try to get this to the lower user, lowest user user cost then, possible. There's also other grants they haven't released uh, the openings yet, but there are other grants coming down the line where if we were awarded this, we'd be able to use this as matching money for additional Correct. federal grants and, under the better build back better program that we would be able to then match if like they, we potentially got awarded whatever amount of money they yep. then match that first grant on top of that yep or you can do it the other way to say okay the state gave us 
35% grant and 65% loan. Well, we're going to take that grant, the other grant that you're talking about, to pay off the loan. And instead of paying it over 40 years, we pay it off on day one. We save all the interest related, related to that. So that's how you, it, it's, it's not the right way to say it, but that's how you play the funding game. Um, and making sure that you don't, as a municipality, self-opt out of it, anything. And so that's one of the opportunities that the town has that if Russ goes on this on his own, his options are very, very limited in comparison to what you guys have for options available to you. There are some funds that are available related to low-income housing and water systems related to um, daycares and schools and stuff like that. So there are things available, but the pool of money available is that much greater when the municipality is involved as opposed to a private entity. So. You know, long-winded way of saying. I'm sorry. Did you? Yep. Yeah, I was just going to ask a question as to whether or not, with with some of the plans there for like daycare and affordable housing and things like that. Yep. When you're talking about looking at uh, median income streams within the service district, does that include any future uh, residences or anything like that? So if there's affordable housing and there's limits on on income thresholds, does yep. that take into consideration? Yes, it would. Uh, one of the big things that pushed us over over the edge in Berlin was there was a um, elderly community that uh, helped with that, that income survey. So yes, exactly to your point, those sorts of things actually are, are advantageous for you in that case. So if you do have a mixture of non-affordable and affordable, that kind of balances that out a little bit so you're not skewing it in one direction or another. But yes, to your point, that, that could be part of of this is the community we're going to serve and this is how this is restricted from an income standpoint. I have three questions. One, if if we decided yes, like let's think about having a municipal water system, um, is Russ's um, galaxy of yes development a part of that municipal water system? And then to get the water from the street to the person's house mm -hmm. is that a cost that they incur or is that included in like how you build a municipal water system and um, what was my third question people I guess people right now have wells would they they would potentially be able to opt out and not be on a municipal water system? Correct. So uh, let's start with the first question first. So the first one was whether or not Galaxy of Yes was included in the cost. Um, that's all a discussion and a negotiation that would happen between these two parties as far as what's palatable, what makes sense on Russ's standpoint. All of that's on the table because from my initial perspective, you, if the town was looking and serious about creating a municipal water system, you've got to control everything related to that water system. So easements on the wells, easements on the tanks, all of those sorts of things would have to be the first part of it. If you don't end up with control of what's there, you don't want it. And how that negotiates out to how that project gets connected, um, what the future rates of those projects uh, or, or those users are going to be. All of that stuff is a negotiation as part of this overarching discussion. And I think it's really, it's up to the parties at, as to what makes sense. You can do it six different ways from Sunday. Uh, I've seen it go where it's completely in the landowner's uh, favor because the landowner holds all the leverage versus other scenarios where you had very amicable landowners who were like, I, I will feel good about providing this. I just want to provide this, and if I can get water related to this and it's whatever, then, I, then I'm good. So I think that's, that's an ongoing conversation if and when you get going down the road. So that was question number one. Question number two, two is the pipes that go to the people's houses. Yes. So that would all be that would all be included in the cost. So that's part of the discussion about having like a survey to the potential service area. If the village was to develop a municipal water system, not talking any cost related, but just if they were, would you be interested in connecting? And yes or no, that gives you some idea. State statute does not allow you to force somebody off a well onto a water system. 
unless you're the town of Killington and you have a PFOS issue, but that's a, that's a completely different subject. But if there is not a contamination-based issue and they have a water supply that they want to keep, you cannot force them onto the water system. So that is one of those data points where, you know, this looks great on paper. Oh, fantastic. This assumes all these people want to hook up, and that is one of the first pieces of information that needs to be gathered as far as the next step. You know, VTrans. I'm assuming VTrans doesn't want to have a water system and doesn't need a water operator and all the other. Cr they would rather just send you guys a, a, you know, a check every month to have water come to their building and not have to worry about it any further. Um, but you don't know that until you ask. Um, so I think part of that is kind of a needs assessment and whether the, the users and, and the potential users do see a need to hook up. Because again, to your point, if half the people we have on this list are like, nah, I've got a well and it's perfectly fine. I mean, I have no idea what I'm drinking, but I'm, I feel good, I'm healthy, you know, I'm good. Then yes, then this, the, the reason to do this becomes a lot less because you are gonna need those users to make it affordable, you know. And, I, I did, and the third question I had um, really was that I forgot, but now I remember, is the, the, like, is this millions upon millions of dollars to do this? Like, oh, what yes. is it? Hundreds? Like, oh, oh, hundreds? No, 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 no. no. I have so, no idea how much no, it costs. Um, so I, kind of order, order of magnitude, I, you know, spitballing and completely just throwing numbers around. You're in probably for what Russ wants to do, three to four million dollars for the water system. I would say order of magnitude, assuming that we serve the entire area that we're talking about. Maybe a 40% increase on top of that, 50% increase on. That's where the economy and scale comes in because he has to build a tank. But if you guys can utilize that tank as well, now there's more people to share in that cost. And again, it goes with the negotiation of all of that stuff. But I think it first comes back to, does the village have people within it who want to connect? That if it were an option to them, mm -hmm. would they do so? Um, and that's really a critical path sort of item so that you guys don't get too far over your skis. Oh, water system sounds great. We've got Russ here who's willing to partner with us and we'll figure something out once we can get far, far enough down the road. If you don't have those people who want to connect, then the reason for doing this kind of loses its steam a little bit. And you wouldn't want to put in sidewalks before you put in water. <laughs> I mean, um, it's like all this stuff if like, you know, realistically. Oh, sure. You have to tear up. A, Roads, right? Oh, and, and and let's be fair. There there are other entities who would need to be involved in that conversation. We're not doing anything in VTrans' road without them knowing it. We got to go under the highway and over the railroad. So there are other entities that would be involved related to that, and and that goes into some of the long range planning. You're right. You don't want to do a streetscape. Killington just finished a big street streetscape project through their main corridor that they're now going to have to all rip up and redo as part of. It's not as big as what they wanted to do, but they put sidewalks in, and they're going to have to rip it all up to put the water system in. Yeah, let's not do uh, that. <laughs> this, is, this is more of a, uh, a well question, I guess, but it sounds like the well you guys are putting in is quite deep. Is there any risk to impact on adjacent property wells? We're going to test for all that. Yep, yeah, so part Will of... Will that be made public? Uh, yes. Yeah. So... Um, the wells have already been drilled. Part of the state's process is to um, request a what they call a well pumping plant. So they have a certain amount of radius that they say, okay, any water supplies within this radius, when you pump this well, you have to go to these landowners and say, do you want your well monitored while I'm pumping my well? If they do, that's, that's given to them free of charge. Russ would have to pay to monitor their well, collect all that data, and then they would get a report related to that, as does the state. And then there is a public participation related to that. So what Russ has to demonstrate is the water he's pulling out of the ground isn't coming from anybody else. And that's that 2,000 foot. It all, it all depends on the demand. So as the demand gets larger, the radius that you have to investigate gets larger. What is the initial radius? I would say in this case, 2,000 feet. So we will definitely want to have our well monitored. Yep, and so all of the neighboring landowners um, and anybody who's identified as a property owner within that investigation radius is required to be contacted. The state makes us demonstrate that we've contacted you. If you choose not to, 
that's fine. You can choose not to, but then you can't go and say you're affected after that case. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that will be a public notice policy or public notice procedure when they get to that point. Right now, it's being held up on some administrative stuff. That's why you haven't heard anything about the pump test. But once that happens, uh, Russ will be required to 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 discuss and identify with all of the, the parcel owners within that investigation. So I have a second question, but it's more pertaining to Russ. Um, when you say affordable housing, is that based on a median income across the state, or is that just a quote unquote uh, nicety like they do in Burlington, and then they charge twice the median income for rent before utilities, and then eventually fill it up with Section 8 when they cannot find the housing occupants? No. Um, I've had <clears throat> preliminary conversations with uh, the exec director of um, Downstreet about how could we do a phased project that we don't know the totality of, but using a number like perhaps 10% of that um, housing stock would be aff uh, perpetually affordable. And what I want to do with those um, is be sure that the system that's put in place doesn't trap people into it because they take too much equity into the um, managing organization. Well, I guess what I just don't want to see is like some of the apartment buildings that have been put into Burlington where they quote unquote get it passed through Burlington City Council because it's affordable housing and then the cheapest unit on the ground floor is $3,200 before utilities. And I've seen that multiple times. They did that with the um, Burlington DMV project when they moved the DMV to South Burlington. That was also supposed to be low income, quote unquote, affordable housing. The cheapest units were twice the state median income. Um, you know, the uh, current statistic for the median income in the state as of 2001, the stats are now for 2022, is 67,000 and change. And that includes all incomes from anyone in the household over the age of 15. So. So, Peter, that, I'm going to direct the question yep. to you because you're the chair, and I'm, I'm going to be just a stickler about this. People should be directing questions to you, and you should be able to direct okay. them to me. Okay. Yep. Do you want me to answer the question? Sure. <laughs> um, I think that's one of the reasons that I wanted to have, want to have, want to start the conversation with um, Downstreet to say, I really want to know <clears throat> the nuts and bolts of their system and how they manage that over time, um, because I'm interested in helping um, the economic side of this. There's all kinds of affordable housing. Um, and right now, they keep 75% of the equity, um, and the buyer gets only 25% of the equity. And I think that traps a lot of people into not being able to move up and out if that's what they want to do. I built a number of FMHA homes in the early years of when it was still good on purpose um, because I, this is important to me. Um, I'm not playing a shell game here. Um, I believe that if we're going to have healthy societies, we need to have mixtures of all socioeconomic um, classes and that we all are better by doing that. I think you so I just, I just, I, I want to be cautious that we don't get yeah. too far afield yeah. here. We're, we're using up a lot of our time, yeah. and I think they're going to be a, a lot more questions. I have, I have some questions. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that we're interested. What that means, what the next steps are, we don't know having spent a lot of time and effort when we went through the last water study years ago, only to find out at the end of the process that the users, we were, we were proposing to create a fire district, which I presume we would be doing in this case as well, probably. Um, and we came up with estimated cost figures. And my memory is at that time, and I could be wrong about this, but I think it was estimated that it was going to be $300 a year for a residential house to have all the water they could use. We weren't at that time going to meter the water. And the feeling in town at that time was that they didn't want to pay $300, and we backed away. That's a short version of a long story. But that's sort of what you're, what you're talking about is Absolutely. the economics of this are huge. 
for our community. It's great that there's potentially funding out there to help us, but we've got to make the numbers work. And uh, I was interested to hear, you know, that you do this survey as part of the start of this process, mm -hmm. because to me, that's what's going to drive the whole thing. I and mean, we have to figure out, it would be great to have fire protection, it would be great to have plenty of potable water, it would be great to have the opportunity for future development, all that stuff sounds great, but the numbers have got to work, and, and you guys are the experts who the, can make this happen. I don't know, Russ, how you know we work together to make this happen. Um, in just thinking about it quickly tonight, to me, the thing is, if we were to do this, the thing would be for, for us to create this water system and for you guys to be a user on the water system. I don't know whether that's what you're thinking or not. I don't know if that's the right approach or not. I mean, we gotta, we got to figure it out. But my big question for tonight is, and I know you guys are anxious to get started over there as soon as you reasonably can, what's the next step for us in this process? Other than, other than saying if we can figure it out, we'd be interested. And I'm saying that for myself. I'm not saying it for the board at this point in time. But can you give us a little? Sure. Uh, so if it were me, I guess the next step would be is, is the town in support of some sort of need survey to the proposed community that we're talking about. I think the next step is trying to get arms around is there do people want it outside of the economic part of it at this point because we can't answer the economic part of it until we know how many people are interested in it and it is a chicken or the egg sort of scenario i think that would be step number one is can we can we send out a survey related to this community and get a gauge of is it 80% of the people we think we can hook on? Is it 60% of the people? That's that first kind of hurdle to say, does this kind of get us over this hurdle to the next step? Beyond that, I think, is when you start talking about whether it's an income survey, because to the financial piece of it, if you aren't subsidized in any way, we can we can talk what those numbers are, but you threw out a number of $300, gallon, or $300 a year. Um, I would kill for three hundred dollars a year in my water system right now, and I can tell you that I pay. Well, that was twenty years ago. Yeah, exa oh, exactly. And, and an order of magnitude sort of thing. I can tell you that people are going to wish it was still three hundred dollars when we get to sure the end are. of this. And, and that's that's something that always needs to be kept in mind. It's never going to be cheaper to do infrastructure than the day you're talking about it, because the next day and the day after that, it is going. It's never going to be cheaper than it is today. And that's hard for everybody to, to A, if I, if I pull water out of my well and I don't have to pay a damn thing for it, I get all of that. Like that, that is certainly a hill, hill that needs to be climbed. I think the next step is really trying to determine whether there is uh, a need in the community with the user base, to say, the potential user base to say, yeah, we're interested in learning more about it. Um, or, yeah, we'd be interested in it so long as I don't have to put my name to anything right now and say, yes, I'm signing up for X, Y, and Z. That would come down the road. Like, once you get to the financial parts of it where you could get a user rate and all of that, there will be a time down the road where we may have to actually physically sign up users to demonstrate you have the user base to pay for all of that. That's, that's way down the road. I think initially it's of the you know, 60 to 70 connections or whatever the number is that we're talking about, how many of those people are actually interested? And if it's less than 50%, then you kind of got your answer. You know, it, there's a need here, but people aren't that interested. And Russ has at least w what he needs for information to determine what his next step is and how he proceeds. So I guess from my standpoint, it's, it's whether or not there's some community support in, in putting out that sort of survey because I don't think Russ has a problem with sending out the survey, but he doesn't want to just send it out to the community and have everybody be like, what the hell is this? What? I, I, I don't want, as opposed to it coming from the town and the town saying, hey, this is something we're considering. I would, I would think if we were to do that, it should definitely come from the town. I, I think it will hold more weight and it will be less likely that it ends yeah. up in the trash can the, the minute it, it comes in. And then you guys get the response. So you get the initial response yeah, back yeah. Of, of, of what you've got there. And then that can kind of lead to the next steps. Sandy. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, 
some village residents came to one of our planning commission meetings and urged us to take a look at water and sewer within the village that they said we're fine for now but we don't think we're going to be fine for very long and that that was part of what precipitated this was within the last year and that's part of what precipitated us to say let's put that on our work plan for 2023 yeah yeah, yeah. i had a coincidental one day in the red hand cafe we have a water system we manage a water system actually and um in downtown Middlesex already, you know, all those buildings. But there was a young couple in there that just moved here um, from uh, Colorado. And uh, they were in the next table to me, and they said, are you a Ross Bennett? And I said, yeah, why, why? <laughs> and uh, they said, well, we just had our water meeting with the 11 people that we get water with, 11 other buildings, and um, is there, you know, is there any something going to happen with water and what I got there yeah, I don't know I said well we're thinking about it she said well we would love to be off that already um, so are those I, are those the people who are connected to the spring across the river I assume so yeah, I um, so. Yeah. And I remember when uh, Wexler's bought um, uh, Camp Mead I was involved with doing the active 50 for them and this and that and the other thing um, and it went up to that thing i mean that was that pre-existing system that was in place both at camp mead and also in the village was not something that should really exist in today's world um from a healthful standpoint um i think next steps for this kind of a thing is to have real good outreach and discussions with the townspeople in general about what you want for your town um, I think, you know, I have my own opinions. Um, I think this is a, a chance to do some things with somebody that wants to be, you know, truly helpful um, in this way and uh, figure out <clears throat> how it can be something that can be done and can be afforded in the, in the time that is here. For us, if we do just it, we call it just us, then we would build, uh, I think the storage tank is only 100,000 gallons, Correct. but it would need to be 500,000 gallons if we was going to service this area. So the, the, we don't really know what the numbers are, but they, they will exponentially change. And doing it after the fact would be sort of really a, a, a sad turn of events. Or not possible at or all. Or not possible right. at all. I would right. hate to cut Correct. you off from it. That's right? what I'm, that's what I'm yeah. worried about is if, right. if we don't, if we don't, move ahead with this project now we're closing a door which it might be very challenging to reopen yeah because i don't future. know that i could convince my partner that we should go from eight inch to 12 inches um just to keep the door open for some time down the road right uh you follow what i'm saying yes i think yeah, one, of, one of the things that i was thinking about before you brought that up was just as you're looking at costs you know the incremental cost to move from that hundred thousand gallon tank to the five hundred thousand gallon tank and not necessarily look at the full incremental cost of the, mm -hmm. the full system but say you move forward with the the galaxy project as it as it sits today but we upsize and look at the incremental cost just to get that set up so that in the future you're setting yourself up for a situation where, sure, you've got all this other cost and infrastructure that needs to be put in place, but you're not handcuffed by the existing system. So I'd like to see uh, and understand, you know, kind of the two sets of incremental costs. One of looking at that system as it sits mm -hmm. and the, the cost that it would take to upsize in a manner that could be added to in the future. Yep. And then, on, a separate cost to expand for the full service territory. And, and that's actually, so Russ is in the process. We were putting a report together related to kind of what he needs to do for the water system, his performa for, you know, what he needs to do for his project. And that's exactly one of the components in there. So yes, it does include looking at the cost of distribution and all that, but really it's, okay, you need to do X. What are the things that need to be done that don't self opt out of 
potential expansion in the future. You know, 500,000 gallon tank, a 12 inch line coming down from the tank instead of an eight inch line, those sorts of things. So we can actually get to a reasonable delta of the difference between those two so that you guys could wrap your, your arms around that a little bit easier than who, who could we hook up, where do we go with the rest of the water system, and at least know that, okay, here's the price of doing business if we, the town, are interested in keeping this as an option on the table down the road, even if we're not ready to move forward on Russ's schedule related to that. Yep. We and a grant schedule. I mean, Cor that's right. the other big thing. I mean, right. this money is not always here. Correct. No, and no, so that's why I'm saying strike while they aren't home. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's twofold. So generational money that's coming into the state that will not happen again in any of our lifetime. They they have put more money into this state in the last year and a half, two years, than the infrastructure programs that the state uses to pay for everybody's infrastructure in the entire history of their their program so 30 years worth of money that they've done for this they have more money right now to spend on all of that now the other portion of that too is and it's a very hot button sort of thing with the governor as well it's the whole reason these village districts were created is to leverage that even more hey we're we're not just someone who wants a water system we're a designated village that needs a water system related to that and that builds upon that on top of the fact that there is money available for that you you build the leverage points related to all of the people up in montpelier saying yeah we know middlesex oh you, okay, we need to do an income survey. Maybe we can open up some more subsidy related to this. Or, hey, we've got all this ARPA money here that we need to get rid of by X and X a date, and we, we thought we were going to have plenty of options to get rid of this. We don't. Maybe this is a good avenue to invest some money into that, uh, similar to what, they, what they're doing with Killington at the moment. I mean, the Killington water system has been talked about for 40 years and there was never a reason to move it forward, and PFAS has given everybody the reason to move it forward, and now the state is taking a lot of money and kind of pushing everybody in that direction because now's the time to do it, and they don't want to be there in another 20 years going, yeah, we, we should have done it then. Can um, you explain what PFAS is? Oh, PFAS. Um, so, Quickly, you, please. Yep, Forever Chemicals. You've probably seen the Forever Chemicals stuff. So, Forever Chemicals, it, PFAS is one of the names. There's PFOA, there's all, all kinds of stuff. So, basically, it's all the um, waterproofing chemicals, fire foam chemicals, all that sort of stuff. That contamination, and we're just now getting the sense of what that contamination is, it's everywhere. The word ubiquitous was made for PFOS. We find it, so everyone knows about the Bennington area. We worked on the North Bennington part of that project. Um, there was a, a polluter, they, they determined they were polluter, they had to pay for everything. That was a one-off. Most of this is we go up in the middle of the woods and we find PFAS. We don't even know how it got there necessarily. There isn't anything else around, but we're contaminated with it now, and now we have to deal with it. So those are long-range uh, sort of discussions that will impact potential users who are on surface water systems. We're finding it in headwaters of streams. How it's getting into the headwaters of the streams, who the heck knows, but precipitates out of the ground. It's everywhere. Everywhere we're looking for it, we find it. So those are other sort of considerations that are a little bit more abstract, but can potentially affect all of your on-site wastewater uh, water supply systems moving forward. And now the burden is on those individual owners to try to figure out how to pay for that. And that becomes untenable. And another reason why Killington is, is where they are at, because all the business owners are like, I can't absorb this O&M cost to continue to treat this. We need a water system, so I'm not responsible for paying this just for my, my property. Um, so not to digress about the PFOS thing, there is no PFOS issue that I'm aware of in Middlesex, so it's not a conversation that you should be worried about this. But when you hear about forever chemicals, that is not an abstract thing where that means somewhere other, somewhere else in the country. That is everywhere. Um, yeah. 
But PFAS. Oh, is, hold on just a second, Ross. I just have a really quick question. Do you have to create a fire district or a water district for this? So there's two options that would be available. You can go the fire district route, which is a quasi uh, municipality as far as the states are concerned, or the municipality can create the infrastructure themselves and basically develop a water system under the auspice of the municipality. So right. either well, or is an just, option. Just to be clear, though, the last time we went around the mm -hmm. block on this, there was really strong feeling that the people in the surrounding community didn't want to pay for a water system which would benefit oh i 100 uh, percent understand so that scenario i think we're I, I mean my understanding of the process unless something has changed is is that we would be creating a water district i have to believe just to I, be clear. I would say i will just say one thing i completely understand that and that's why there's a lot of fire districts that exist you will also notice that a lot of fire districts are going away right now about the 40 or 50 year period from when they were created it was the generation who, yeah, we're going to do this, and now the next generation has come up, and they have no interest in that whatsoever. And it puts some of these systems in a real bind of how does it move to the next generation. The municipality allows that kind of form to be in place to say it's just the next people who need to be on the board. It's, an, it's how that survives. How you guys go about paying for things and stuff like that, those are all municipal right. decisions related right. to, hey, we we're get, just charging we the get, users, we're not charging we've the got, tax base. We've got homework to do on, oh, that, on that subject, and, and we can get advice. I'm sure the state can help us. Oh, absolutely. That. Yep, and, and we've created fire districts. We've dissolved fire districts. We're in the process of, of both scenarios right now. So there's not a there's not a good or a bad. It's it's basically all dependent on the local, um, local considerations. Yes. Yeah. Russ, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, PFAS, they're finding it at every school because of the detergents that have been used in the school. Floor waxes. Floor wax. It's that, I mean, it's that kind of a product. So we're hopeful. We haven't tested for it up there. We've tested for this many things so far um, that we, this would be a, a solution to that. Um, fire districts, because we looked at them in the valley. Um, when Waitsfield we were doing some other things. You can use those to cross town lines. So a fire district can be that way. That's one of the values of it, if you want to provide water to another place. Um, Waitsfield, I was involved with the water system there um, that we finally got in place without a sewer. Um, hopefully we'll eventually get a sewer. Um, one of the things that I saw that works really well there is um, it was really cheap to tie in initially. It's like a couple hundred bucks um, to, and if you didn't sign up for that before, beforehand, now if you want to get on, it's yours, and it's probably five grand or so by the time you dig into the thing, dig to the building, put the, all the new valves, all that kind of stuff in. So we can think about the kind of incentives that can be in place for this. And then the other piece that I just wanted to throw out there that I've sort of learned listening and talking to these guys is it seems like the rules and the incentives and the laws are all aimed at not having, not encouraging private um, water systems. So if we had a private water system and you wanted to tie onto it, it would have to become part of the municipal system anyway. I mean, that's sort of how I would see it. Yeah. And at that point, the seller of that system would probably want something um, where it's probably easier to make it all into one that's more affordable for all by working together. I don't know exactly what that means for a deal. I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not breasting my cards on this one. Um, yeah. You know, it's no. I think that's I think that's stuff yeah. we all have to think about. I right. I really appreciate your presentation tonight. I think we've got to got to bring it to a close right sure. now. I, I I we've all got thinking to do, work yeah. to do. Um, I guess I would be interested in in hearing from uh, other select board members. Are we as a board interested in pursuing this as a project? Not saying we're going to do it, but start the start the process to see if it makes sense and if there's a way for us to do it. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it makes total sense to reach out and see if there's interest amongst the, the folks in the village to, to make those connections and, and conduct that survey. I think that makes sense. And, and again, I'm interested in, in those couple of price points, sure. the differences there mm -hmm. as well, kind of thinking about making sure we're future-proofed mm -hmm. yep. in some way, shape, or form. So, I mean, that's where I sit. Okay. I agree. Liz? I agree. Victor? Yeah, I do. Bridget? Agreed. Okay. Yes. So I think that's a, that's a first step tonight. If you have, I presume you have uh, sample paperwork for a survey you could share with us? Sure. Yep, we can put something together for you guys to take a look at and uh, have that would to be so. That would be great. And I'll just throw this little piece on the table. I don't know exactly what that would cost, so I'm not gonna put myself in too much jeopardy, but um, I know what it is like to m be on a select board and never have enough money. Um, so um, we, the Galaxy, we're spending money on this. We would foot that. So you wouldn't have to be, you know, sort of hamstrung. Okay. Right well, now. thank you. Thank and, you for that. You know, uh, I think my intentions are clear. Um, yeah. If we can find a way to do the best we can for the society. That's that's good for all. So, Sarah, roughly, roughly, what does it cost to do a mailing? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I just don't know that number off the top of my head. I mean, well, we're talking about you. Said you said there are 190 potential. Um, no, I think the number that we had was in the 40s, yeah. Yeah. and that's just well, parcel well, numbers. So that includes VTrans. Um, BGS. Um, yeah, we're not talking about we're yeah. not talking about real no. real money, but I I appreciate your offer. And then they, you've got to do the analysis and all that stuff, so that would right. be part of that. Okay. Assignment. Well, let's try and get that part done yep. as soon as we reasonably can. So okay. if you can if you can uh, touch base with Sarah and get uh, a sample survey to her, we can review it and get that out and. And see where this goes. I mean, this is a this is a great opportunity for the town of Middlesex, and uh, if we can make it work, and it and it works for for you and your partner, Russ, it's all good. Yeah, it's called working together. Thank you. And thank you for your time. Thank you for yeah, coming tonight. Yeah. Yeah. It was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Emergency. Yeah. Yeah. Reviewing and approving the 2023 Local Emergency Plan Action Likely, and we received a copy of that. Um, um, Assuming the numbers and emails are correct, everyone yeah. verified theirs. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. All, all put it together. All put so. together. Okay. But we need to get it in. Okay. I didn't have time to go through it in any great no, detail. I mean, he updated the, the, con the contacts and, you know. I read it. Yeah. yeah. It looks very standard. So are there any issues or comments? Is there a motion to approve? I'll move that we approve the um, 2023 Local Emergency Management Plan. Second there. Okay. All in favor of approving the 2022-23 emergency management plan, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Peter, you have a section there where I you got it right here. Okay. Yep. Um, Treasurer's report, Dorinda. I uh, don't really have anything to do with the finances. Um, I do have a couple things. I won't be here at the next meeting, but um, Cheryl's going to put together the orders, and you guys can approve the orders, and then I will come back and sign the checks the day after the meeting. I would fly in that night, so. Um, yeah. So that, just so you know that, I'm, I'll be here to sign the checks the next day. Um, the other thing that happened um, in the last couple of weeks is um, I was I was inquired about bereavement pay, 
that there was an employee who um, lost a member of the family, and they didn't currently take any time or ask for time, um, but it was that because nobody can do anything right now anyways, but there's nothing in the personnel policy about any kind of bereavement time, although I kind of feel we had this discussion, had this discussion when, um, when Shane's right. Um, my brother-in-law died. So, um, but we never put in anything into the policy, and I don't recall what the consensus was. But if the question comes up, I'd like to be prepared to answer it. <laughs> I think the quick answer is, it's personal time. We don't have bereavement time. Right. What you decided is that what August we decided in August? Now. So it would have to be out of personal time. I believe time. so. Okay. I mean, no you know. Yeah. We're putting on our goals, uh, Thank you very much. reviewing once again the personnel policy, but yep. as of right now, it's not in there, so it's not there. Okay. Well, they hadn't, no. nobody's and, I mean, asked there's for also, any. There's also potentially vacation time. Right, So, but it's all out of their time. Okay. Their PTO. Whatever, whatever their bucket of time. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember, to be honest with you, how we had done it. Um, okay. But you were, as, if we did have a bereavement, like let's say you got whatever, four days of bereavement for yeah. an immediate family member or something like that, this person may have been asking, oh, well, we can't actually bury the person until summer, so right. we're going to so take four I, it days may off come up, It might come up down yeah. the road or something like that. I yeah. don't know. Uh, but it didn't come up. We just wanted to be prepared for I mean, I would, I mean, my quick answer. answer would be if we allow bereavement time, and it was some kind of deferred thing, I would think that would be de bereavement time, but yeah. we All don't right. have it now, so. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be clear on okay. that in case it comes up. But it sounds like Are that could be part of our goal. Of, I know we've got it as a goal to review the personnel policy. Right. Do we have a list of our goals? Yeah, so, things? so are we carrying a list? I know I have Not one um, that I've started for myself just to remember things, right. but it would be good to have an official list that you, we're not just that, talking about. The next agenda. It's the next agenda. And I think, yeah. Sarah, don't you make a list for us? Yeah. 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 That would yeah. be wonderful. We make a list thing. every year. <laughs> but, you know, so, <laughs> we just but, kind of. But, but he brings up a good point. It's like, and I used to do this, um, I put on my calendar, like in budget session, oh, let's not forget to talk about, for example, right. the street sweeper. Right, like make sure that that gets in the budget yeah, so that we're I not do forgetting. That too. And yeah. yeah, and so like I'm wondering if there's a better document that we and I mean I could I could just add it to my other like ARPA document. That, like these are the things like during budget season. Let's make sure we talk about this because this happens all the time that we like. Oh yeah, let's not forget that. Yeah, it's like buying right. presents. Maybe I'll just make that. Up. I'll make that up right now. No, I can, yeah, I can do that. I'm a select board assistant. No, I, I don't mean the list of our wishes. No. I mean, like, random little thoughts yeah. that we want to remember. Oh, okay, cannabis board, that's one of them. Yeah, cannabis board yeah. is one of them. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking about even just this whole personnel policy review and, and the time, and now it's yeah. bereavement, and we've talked about, yeah. you know, overtime and, and you know, uh, work days and all kinds of stuff like that. So even just under that one topic, we've got, like, six topics. Right as part of that conversation. Correct. I just want to make sure that we're, we don't get there and everybody's like, yeah, I'm good. And then, then it three months later, we're, hey, we've got to talk about this again. I get you. Right. Are we doing that now? Well, it was just, I brought it up because <laughs> I didn't know if it was really a goal. I just wanted clarity on yes, it. I so. would add that to that, that personnel conversation. Yeah. Okay, so everybody's favorite topic, and it is now five minutes of seven, so, and we've got some more items we need to cover. Are we ready to deal with this tonight, or do we want to yet again pass it over until our next meeting? I think we should start making a little list. Okay. We don't have to spend hours doing it. Like personnel policy. Review personnel policy, and then put under that bereavement. And vacation overtime 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 paid time off yeah work days i think most of those things will bubble to the surface as we go through it but right doesn't it's easy to forget the bereavement thing or but not boots 
No, I don't think so. To rest. Boots are put to rest as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Um, the other thing that comes up frequently uh, talking about that is, is the duration of um, four-day work weeks and, and hours and, you know, what is the actual period there? You know, that's, uh, that's kind of evolved. So that conversation, as we're going through that, we might as well hit it all. Oh, I'm sure we will. Oh, you got your cannabis board. Yep. Water. Water. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is stressing me out. Yeah, so write down water. I've got it. And, yeah. Uh, we've got to finish up on ARPA stuff, ARPA allocations. Yep. yep. Do you have our list from last year or no? I do. I would have to go downstairs oh, to the system. Don't bother. Don't worry I about can't it. I can get into the system for my yeah. broken computer. It's okay. Here. Let's add well, my favorite topic. What? Welch Park. Oh, yes. That's only, <laughs> That's only been Oh, Town Hall five has years. to be put on there. <laughs> it is. Yeah, well, town Hall is on there. Welch Park is yep. definitely on there. But you, you made really great progress last year at Town Hall. Dirt. I know, but that's this year is the year. Okay. Like, we need to, we probably need to present to the voters next March something. Mm -hmm. And that's you, just right around the corner. Do you think, you, do you think you're so, going to put a bond on the... I think we have to see, right? Like we have to see, and so then in the fall, write this down too, apply for um, municipal um, energy, there's a MRPA, is that the name of it? I, I mean, municipal I would, energy I would include Murga? Grant, Murga? grants period, um, because I don't think, you yep. know, there's constantly new stuff coming out. Um, you know, so that as a general topic um, and getting into specific grants that we're seeking. Um. And I would also I would also say not just the town hall, but also Don't the town know. garage. Yeah. yeah. Town buildings. Yeah, town, town buildings. buildings. Fire, overall, fire, yes. fire, fire department. Fire department. There you yep. go. Yep. How do you, you sometimes these things crop, pop up about the rec center area up there by the school? Any, you know, you keep, you keep put, putting money aside for the, for the tennis courts and things, but I'm not sure anything is happening with that. You look at me blankly, but. Well, yeah. so I know I can speak for the budget committee that that was part of that process yeah. for this year and allocating money for, you know, resurfacing tennis yeah. courts and basketball uh, uh, posts and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I mean, really it's okay. relying on the rec recreation uh, director committee whatever you want to call him um, and moving forward that process um, signage uh, for like you guys have talked about trails I putting up signs for trails and things like that everything seems to go away the isn't that done by the uh, trails committee I would think I so. believe they're doing that they're doing it. Right, I'm just trying to think of things that have come up yeah didn't we talk about um, speed limits yes oh, God speed limits yes we talk about um, the Woods Road Bridge Wood Road Bridge you know the bridge that goes across Martin's Brook is it falling apart that's gonna be potholes in it we've patched them two or three times and been patching them since uh, Paul was here Yep. Um, there is a grant that will be open this summer uh, specifically to repair bridges in the Build Back Better program. Right. That's something that uh, I'll keep an eye on personally, but um, that we could keep an eye on as a town to apply for. Um, we just uh, met with, uh, I was talking with Eric this morning, and uh, the people that did that bridge before. Uh, we were going to give them a call and see if uh, they could roughly tell us what it would cost. I don't I know. I think we did it in the 90s. Sounds right. I think it was in the 90s that we did that bridge before. Years go by pretty fast. They do. The new becomes old. Merp. Municipal Energy Resilience oh, yeah, Program. I've been there. So I, I was just going to say to Steve that I know he's spending, you know, a fair bit of time researching some of these grants and whatnot. But if if you want to pass any of those specific things onto the select board, our our emails right on the web page there, 
um, okay. if you want to gain access to us. Yeah, that would be great. Sam knows it. So, <laughs> I, I figured presume. you probably already knew that, but I, I do recognize the effort that you're putting into, uh, you know, researching this stuff, and I, I find it extremely helpful. So, um, if there's stuff that you feel like pertains to us, you know, is if the you water shoot it and along, sewer the build back better too? That is, yes. Um, that is the Drinking Water and Clean Water State Revolving Fund, uh, and that's an EPA uh, specific a grant through the EPA under that uh, program. And can you can you talk uh, briefly outside? You had mentioned, um, you know, being able to apply for this stuff, and you mentioned. Uh, yeah, so I, I talked to Liz a little bit, and we do have, um, or Sarah rather, um, okay. an entity validation number. Uh, the town already has one um, from Sam.gov, um, and we use that number basically to fill out the application for these grants. Um, Currently, the one that's open that pertains to us, other than the, the, the rolling one for the drinking water, um, is the preventing outages and enhancing the electric grid formula. That's open. That opened uh, March 31st. The deadline for that's May 31st. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure we were set up because I felt like we, we would be, but yeah. okay. That. So I presume somewhere in this town hall project the subject of that building across the parking lot is going to come up but i want to make sure that we hopefully deal with that building for once and for all as part of whatever we do with the town hall renovation i i would think that that's part of the study that's happening currently and and any i'm not sure i'm not sure I don't it is no that it no, is I it's not think. okay i mean there, there's the whole parking thing that they're going to talk about as part of it but I don't know that that, I don't think that building is a part of it. So I'm willing to say, I believe we had a goal of two years of finding some good use for that building or we were gonna demolish it. Well, the two years has come and gone. We've now we invested money it. in painting it. We didn't paint it last time, did we? No, no we, we deferred not. the painting. We could have a controlled burn. <laughs> well, whatever. I think this is a lot of goals. It's a lot of goals. I think, I think the that's town plenty. hall is huge. Besides, Peter, we're using and that. the water, what? if we we're go to that, is like 10 times. Well, then are we going to continue to repair it or not? That's I just, I that's just, the I just, I, every time I go by that building, a cold shiver goes down my spine. Oh. Can I use your black pen, please? Yes. We should probably hire a grant writer. First grant they get, they'll be paid for. Um, because yeah, I'm not I mean, doing all this. Wait, well, no, the whole issue, well, that, to... that's a good question. I mean, the whole issue of all these grants, if our whole future, whether it's water systems, building renovations, whatever, is going to be grant-based. Well, we should, I mean, at the very least, I think we should just, first of all, look for volunteers. I'll help, I'll help that advance. Will you? Oh. Ah. There you go. Good start. We got two. There you go. Thank you. Who's going to get the binders? I'll give you the binders. I'll give you the roll pin. That's okay. Let's these go back to Sarah. So let's. Uh, can I say one more thing about the water? The sewer? Yep. Water and sewers. You know, the, the uh, you got to do them kind of together. That's what that's what he said, roughly. I mean, you create all these that water and creates additional opportunities because yeah, you're not so. worried about the proximity to wells. Don't have to. So here's what. Here, right. and, anyways, and again, forget I'm, that. Forget I'm going. Forget question. I'm forget going back into ancient history again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But when we went through this process the last time. What was determined was the need was water, not wastewater. Okay. And they said pretty much the same thing we heard tonight, that by not having to worry about the proximity to wells, you create opportunities for wastewater. Now, you know, we're getting into a creating a municipal sewer system, that's a whole other right. kettle of fish, gigantic, both in terms of cost and maintenance and everything else. The town's really got to be uh, open to uh, a lot of growth 
A lot of what? A lot of growth. Oh, yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. But the, the, the Agency of Natural Resources, Julie Moore, and a specifically the guy up on Notch Road there at the end of, uh, is his name Bolio? Up above you. Uh, oh, you're talking about Brian Redman? Brian Redman. He's in charge of that. I don't know if anybody knows him very well, but he was telling me that they had just boodles and oodles of money. The who had oodles and boodles of money? A&R. Uh, A&R and Julie Moore and that whole thing. Maybe we I, should ask Julie Moore. Right. <laughs> right. Get our clutches on her. Um, well, well I I'm going to I'm going to suggest that we close our discussion on goals for tonight. Let's yes. everybody review the minutes. Think of other things. We can add things to the goals as we need to. But we always come up with these laundry lists, and then we get through about a third of them every uh, every year. I was just going to say, let's let's put some good ones on there and let's address them. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, Victor. No, I was telling you the number that we do. One. Oh, we do more than one. Do we? We do more than one, but we certainly don't do the whole list by any stretch ever. So we did pretty well last year. Does Paul does Paul have his hand up again? Somebody does. Thank you, Sarah. Oh. Just just a quick question, guys, and, and Vic, you and Eric might might be on this already. Have have we looked into as we look at bigger goals and capital stuff, the feasibility of the pit? I know when we first opened that up and it's been great, we've been getting winter sand out of there. Do we know like long term what, what kind of years we of service we've got from that to when our budget's gonna gonna reflect us having to physically purchase sand elsewhere and haul it from further places? I I haven't been involved in any of that obviously since I left. I didn't know if that's something that might be worth just keeping on the on the back burner because it's a big dollar cost, obviously. And I don't we've got the resource now, but for how long? So yeah. I know when we did that and help me out here, Vic. Steve and uh, the McCullough boys took a look at that, and they had some estimated numbers, but I don't remember we look what they at, were now. Paul, we look at it from year to year, and, you know, everything changes when you start taking, you run into clay. We ran into a big, big pile of clay, so we had to move over into the back towards, like, Shelley's house. Um, it's basically year to year, and, uh, I mean, I think we're going to try to get it out of there this year. Um, we we uh, we certainly got some gravel. We crushed some of the gravel over there. We're using going to use that for uh, this spring. Uh, McCullough's have told us that uh, they let they left the crusher in the in the in their loader over there, and they they uh, they told us uh, we went over and put new batter. We uh, McCullough's went over and put in new batteries, and uh, and uh, they're letting the town use their loader for nothing to uh, load the trucks over there for this spring, which is very good for not running the, <laughs> running the loader back and forth. But um, yeah, I, I, it's just year to year. And then the other thought I was talking with Eric is, uh, uh, you know, we're gonna put, uh, we'd like to run a test strip here uh, this summer uh, using uh, complete uh, crushed granite uh, for our road and then um, we've we've talked to some other towns and using the uh, like in this case northeast uh, crusher sand for winter sand on it uh, and and just over a period of a few years their roads have gotten a lot better and they don't there's no you know in the springtime uh, there's uh, you know less mud uh, they've all they've said they straightened themselves out in eight years so we were thinking about doing that because that sand in the pit's so silty that it, uh, if you put good gravel down, it kind of it kind of uh, adds qu quite a bit of silt to that, and, and uh, it uh, harms the integrity of the gravel underneath. So we we're going to try it, and uh, but but for now, Paul, to answer your question, we we're going to try to get the sand out of there this year. I mean, we had to that move. That sounds great. No, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious what the longevity looked like up, just up there because obviously we only cleared a certain amount. So right. I was curious what what things we're looking at at this point because I know that can, that can be a big cost difference for you know for hauling it obviously and, and right. purchasing. So right, right. 
so that's our thoughts there, good, bad, or ugly. Uh, you know, and like you, like I said, we're moving kind of, I guess it's kind of north, up up uh, towards like Shelley's house, that direction, towards, uh, what's the guy's name that owns the woodlot? David Villeneuve, up towards Villeneuve. We good with goals for tonight? Yes. Yeah. Good work. Thank you. Okay. Considering the appointment of Dell McDonough to the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District action likely, is there a motion? I move that we. Appoint. It's actually a reappointment, sorry. What's that? It's actually a reappointment. I'd like to reappoint Mel. Yeah. And is there a second? I can't do both. I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, congratulations. Accepting Matt Sheely's resignation from the Middlesex Slay. Conservation Commission. Slay. He's moving to another town. Okay, I'll move that we accept his resignation and thank him for his service. Yeah. I'll second it. Second. Okay. Thank you. What if All we, in what? favor of accepting uh, Matt's resignation, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Uh, we've approved. We've approved. Accepted his resignation. Um, considering reapproval of the Roots Market Class Two liquor license action, likely. So moved. And a second. second. Randy, thank you. All those in favor of reapproval of the Roots Market Class II liquor license, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And considering reapproval of the locals, Class I and Class II liquor licenses. Yes. So moved. Yep. You're moving your seconding? No. Or I'm moving. Person. Moving your seconding. Second. Sure. Whatever. That really okay. doesn't make any difference. Okay. Okay. All in favor of reapproval of the locals' liquor licenses, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We've approved it. Thank you. Update on the 28 Rich Road FEMA buyout. No action. I'm going to make this really brief. I thought that I was going to tell you that we're going to do a closing on that property May 3rd, but <laughs> the owner of the property has said that uh, she needs more time to find a place to live. So that has been put off for at least a month, which will means it will be put off for at least another month because it takes 30 days to put a HUD statement together. So that project has no chance of starting until at the very earliest July. 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 And what's our time frame? It expired. The grant expires. The, the project expires in October. And my only, only comment on that is that at some point in time, we've got a pin in that if it can't happen. If she can, I mean, it's the ball's in her court. We've done everything to make it possible for her. It's not our job to find her a place to live. <clears throat> uh, correspondence? Uh, I received some correspondence uh, that I forwarded to the, um, to the uh, Conservation Commission uh, because uh, a, a person who, a, a vineyard owner who's been working on Portal Road on the Jean, on Jean Joslin's old property has been growing uh, grapes, has gone to the Vermont Land Trust to, and for, to acquire this, put a conservation easement on this land. It's, it's going to result in the, an, as in the VLT asking for a $2,500 donation from the town from the conservation fund toward this purchase. But first, it usually goes before the Conservation Commission. So the Conservation Commission is meeting on Thursday. They'll consider it, and then they'll come here. That's the only time, that's the only correspondence we have that was directed to the select board. Besides anything. So there's no action required by us now. No, it's no. just I'm just giving you a heads up. That's what's coming down the pike. It was correspondence. Any other business? Anyone? Eric will be on next week. Yeah. Files is going to be in charge. Files is asked that I go over every day when they get started. Okay. Good. Don't laugh. 
I'm laughing because we're almost done. Is there any other business? Okay. No, sir. Thank you one and all. Thank we you. are adjourned. <laughs>